Hello chemists and welcome back to Bale's Chemistry. Today we're looking at how period three elements react. This is on paper one of your final exams and is an AQA specification 2.4 properties of period three. Now in this lesson, we're gonna reintroduce the period three elements. Then we're gonna look at how they react with water. And then we're gonna finish up by looking at their reactions with oxygen. Bale's Chemistry is now way more than just our YouTube channel. You can find over a thousand questions written by me for you to practice on baleschemistry.co.uk. You can find revision tips and other short reels over on Instagram, or you can just hang out here and subscribe to the channel. So period three elements run from sodium in group one all the way across to argon in group eight. It's the main period we focus on and we've already looked at some of the properties of period three elements in the first year of this course. You can find a link to that video in the description below. Now, when period three elements react, they conduct redox reactions, which is to say that both reduction and oxidation processes take place. Now, period three elements will always undergo the oxidation reactions. And for our AQA specification, we're going to focus on the reactions of sodium and magnesium with water and all the other period three elements from sodium through to sulfur with oxygen. Starting with the reactions of water then, sodium reacts to form sodium hydroxide. Now this is a reaction we see many times through our science GCSE course, and it's often used to demonstrate the reactivity of group one metals with water. Now, having added the oxidation states to this equation here, we can see that the sodium has been oxidized and the hydrogen has been reduced. As you can remember, this reaction is very vigorous and it produces a very strong alkali solution. This reaction can be dangerous as it's really highly exothermic and produces hydrogen, which is flammable. Moving on to magnesium then, we see two different reactions with water. That's because we can get water and steam. With water, it's gonna form magnesium hydroxide. And looking at the oxidation states, we can see that magnesium has been oxidized and the hydrogen has been reduced. Now this reaction is really slow at room temperature because the magnesium hydroxide is only slightly soluble. So it coats the rest of the magnesium in a fairly unreactive layer. Now this means it only forms a weakly alkali solution. Now when magnesium reacts with steam, we instead form magnesium oxide. Now this reaction is much faster and it burns with a really bright white flame. We're now gonna look at the reactions of the period three elements with oxygen. We're not gonna look at chlorine and argon as they don't really react with oxygen to form oxides. Although the oxides of chlorine are made, but they're formed through a different chemical process. So let's have a look then at sodium reacting to form sodium oxide, magnesium reacting with oxygen to form magnesium oxide, aluminium forming aluminium oxide, silicon to make silicon dioxide, phosphorus makes phosphorus pentoxide or phosphorus five oxide, and sulfur makes sulfur dioxide. We'll look at each of these chemical reactions in turn over the next few slides. So first up then, we've got sodium reacting with oxygen to form sodium oxide. Now this is a really vigorous reaction and it burns with that yellow flame. It's a similar color to what you might see in some of those old street lamps, although most of them are LEDs now and are really bright white, but those old orangey sort of street lamps are exactly this sort of color. And when you make this, you'll observe a white solid being formed. And this is a giant ionic structure. Now, magnesium also reacts with oxygen to form magnesium oxide. Again, this reaction is really, really vigorous. It burns with a brilliant white flame. And you might have done this in lesson before where you hold a little blue filter up in front of your eyes so you don't damage them. Now, magnesium oxide is produced and this is a white ionic solid. The reaction with aluminium and oxygen forms aluminium oxide. It's a slow reaction if we leave it out in the air, but it speeds up when we heat it vigorously and it burns with a really bright white flame again. And the product for this is a white ionic solid again. Now when silicon burns with oxygen to form silicon dioxide, it can be a slow reaction if we leave it out in air, but if we heat it up, it burns vigorously again. Now we'll see it burning with a white flame and it produces a white solid, which is a giant covalent crystal structure of silicon dioxide, which we commonly know as sand that we'll find on the beach when we go on holiday. Now, phosphorus burns in oxygen to produce phosphorus pentoxide or phosphorus five oxide. And this formula, P4O10, is really worth learning. It's a very common exam question and it's almost impossible to answer unless you know the formula of the oxide formed. Now, this reaction happens spontaneously, which means phosphorus will burn on its own when it's exposed to oxygen. It burns with a brilliant white flame and it produces again, a white solid, which is a simple molecular in structure. There's a lot of pattern going on here, so I'm sure these will be quite easy to pick up and learn. Now, the last one to go and have a look at is sulfur. 
So sulfur reacts with oxygen to form sulfur dioxide. It burns steadily when we heat it and it burns with a lovely blue flame. Now at room temperature, sulfur dioxide, which is produced, is a gas with a simple molecular construction. So let's wrap that up with looking at some key points then. So period three elements, sodium and magnesium react with water. Magnesium, remember, reacts more vigorously with steam to form magnesium oxide instead of magnesium hydroxide. Period three elements, sodium through to sulfur, react with oxygen to produce oxides. Remember, sodium burns yellow, sulfur burns blue, and all of the rest of them burn white. And it's really important to learn the P4O10 formula, because without that, you're going to really struggle to answer any equations relating to making phosphorus oxide. Thanks, chemists, for watching this episode of Bale's Chemistry. More period three chemistry up here. If you haven't already, subscribe down here. And if you want some question help, head over to balechemistry.co.uk.